Hello everyone, welcome to a Florida Farming in the Philippines. Uh, you know, I don't, uh, I've made it a, I've made it a point not to engage with the uh, trolls unless it's uh, something of importance. Uh, I, for the most part, ignore them. But, uh, I was uh, going through the, uh, you know, I, I don't watch their channels. Um, but I, I do go through the comments on Gary Martin's channel and uh, Willie Wanker had uh, put up this link in several threads um, and so I, I just I decided to hit the link and lo and behold it's lo and behold it's a uh, it was a link to uh, one of the um, one of the uh, uh, what's the actual name? Uh, exposing expat scammers, I think. Exposing exposing expat scammers, I think, is the actual name of the channel. Um, one of uh, the dimwits, uh, uh, ex friends, uh, similar to the dimwit, being that he's he's a dimwit. Uh, Robert Thomas Taylor, uh, Gordy Bob, uh, have, you know, whatever you want to, I think Robert Thomas Taylor is his name. Um, look, I, I've made a fool of this guy in the past, and uh, for the most part just ignore him, but sometimes he he's such a twat that he uh, uh, is deserving of a bit of a smackdown. So anyway, I followed this link. And it's a, uh, it was a link to, um, basically, they had uh, trolled and tried to scam Gina. Um, you know, it, it, it goes a long way to showing what kind of uh, people that we're dealing with. Um, you know, the name of the channel is Exposing Expat Scammers. But uh, their main, their 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 focus is me. I, I'm the only expat scammer that they're after, except for Gina. Uh, she seems to be uh, high on their radar as well, um, and she is neither an expat nor a scammer. Uh, they go after her just because they're they're hateful twats who uh, just like to be hateful twats, and. Um, you know, going after a, a, a Filipina um, is just, you know, well, it just goes to show what kind of people they are. Uh, you know, the dimwit swore up and down he was never going to monetize his channel. And then swore up and down he was never going to accept donations. Well, lo and behold, he, he did both. Uh, the ultimate hypocrite, right? Well, he's not the only hypocrite because um, old Gordy Bob said the same thing. He was never going to monetize his channel. Um, not only did he monetize his channel, uh, he faked and BS'd his way uh, into being able to monetize it, buying uh, subscribers uh, to get over that thousand subscriber mark so that he could in fact then, after he said he was not going to, uh, monetize his channel. Uh, just goes to show you the, the kind of hypocritical uh, twats that uh, I have to deal with on a uh, on an ongoing basis. Now, as trolls go, uh, old Gordy Bob is not the is not the uh, brightest bulb on the tree. He's 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 he is in different ways just as stupid as GD Mead is, uh, but you know in different ways. Um, his his whole thing is is that um, he likes to take things out of context and then just make up a narrative. Uh, that's his mo. And uh, the people that follow him are just as stupid as he is, and uh, soak it all up like uh, biscuits like biscuits soak up soak up gravy. Um, you know the Shrek's cousin and the constipated cowboy and. And the village idiot Don Grace, you know, they're all just they're all just right in it. And um, so, what had happened in this particular case is that um, 
they had uh, this guy, well, this, who knows if it's a guy or a woman, I think it was Gordy Bob himself, um, who went by the handle of Colorado Farmer and who came on, uh, who participated in a live stream, a couple of live streams that I had, I had put up. So anyway, um, uh, this uh, Colorado Farmer guy was uh, participating in the, in the live chat. And he uh, got a hold of Gina and basically just asked her, you know, uh, what she wanted and what she needed. And uh, Gina told him, well, I need, I think it was 7,000 pesos for, to get their CR done. And this was supposed to have been some kind of a big sting on uh, what scammers we all are. Um, look, Gina's not well off. And if someone comes up and offers you uh, assistance she's going to take it and who wouldn't well there is someone who wouldn't and we'll get to that in a minute uh, but I don't think it's anything bad on Gina that she would um, accept help because there's really no other option for her uh, and that they would um, that they would pur purposely go after a Filipina just to uh, uh, try to entrap her and shame her in, into uh, for the purpose of trying to prove that she's some kind of a scammer or, or an e-beggar well uh, it just goes to show uh, what twats these guys are so uh, I followed this link I watched the video it, it, uh, it showed the, the emails going back and forth um, and that, that was pretty much it uh, what do you need I need this okay well uh, now I'm gonna I'm gonna show it to the you know I I uh, I had uh, uh, been unaware that all this was going on in the background. They seem to think that you know Gene and I have these uh, strategy sessions where we sit down and and uh, try to figure out how we're gonna milk people. Uh, nothing is is further from the truth. I I don't discuss with Gina what she's got going on down there. I'm usually the last to know. Um, but nonetheless, oh great, now we got a chainsaw in the background. Uh, nonetheless, that was the gist of it, that they had tried to uh, uh, entrap Gina in just a, you know, an unprofessional uh, way. And um, the, uh, the interesting part was, is that uh, uh, old Gordy left the, left the hint in the air that uh, he had a big gotcha moment coming up for me as well. So uh, I had exchanged some emails with this Colorado farmer guy as well. And uh, I guess as it turns out that uh, they were trying to entrap us both. So um, I'm going to be going over some of these emails that uh, we exchanged back and forth. And you guys can be the judge of... Uh, of uh, what transpired. You know, they had not only targeted uh, Gina, they were also yanking Top Dye's chain. Um, and that combination has, well, it pissed me off enough uh, to do this pokey in the eye kind of video and break my rule of uh, not engaging with these idiots. Um, I guess they had offered uh, Tatai work building a house somewhere down in Tagbalaran, uh, which would be a, a big boom for Tatai. Uh, they need the money, uh, even though most of their most of the materials for their house has been donated. They have used uh, a, a good portion of their own money and some of our money as well to get their house started done. Uh, whatever it hasn't been all donations, and uh, Tatai's labor has most has a, the only place that, that got donated from is Tatai. Uh, he did all the work on that house for nothing. Um, of course, it's his house, and, and that's what you would expect. But he has investment in that house, so uh, it just uh, you know that they would for no other reason but to try to. Uh, degrade and defame 
uh, Tata and Gina that was the only reason they were doing it um, just just again shows you the kind of low lowlifes uh, that uh, youtubers have to deal with so in my case uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna read through uh, the emails that were sent back and forth between this Colorado farmer guy and myself uh, his original email had gone into my spam folder which I wasn't checking hadn't checked since I don't know before the typhoon and so I had just missed it uh, but Gina suggested that I look in the spam folder and I did and, and lo and behold there it was and I'm going to be putting up uh, this isn't my usual forte but I'm going to be putting up screenshots of these emails as well I don't know exactly where I'm going to put them within this video um, but the actual I will show you the actual emails as well so anyway uh, this uh, first uh, email that uh, Colorado farmer sent who goes by the name of Brian uh, spelt kind of funky I've never seen it spelt that way but that's neither here nor there uh, it says hi Brian this is Brian aka Colorado farmer and this is on uh, January 29th. Uh, I'm surprised you are thinking about quitting the farm. Uh, I contacted Gina about getting Tati to get a crew together and build my house. I thought he would like the job and make some good money for him and Gina. I guess he's not interested. Anyway, maybe you and me can make some kind of a deal to help you save the farm. I think you like it there on your farm and a good place to raise your son. Sorry I haven't contacted until now. I have I've been selling my cows and getting other machinery machinery etc etc uh, ready to sell because I'm retiring. Um, and this is my reply on January 30th. Uh, hi Brian uh, sorry for the late reply your email somehow went into my spam folder which for some reason I have not checked for almost a year luckily Gina suggested I look at it as far as William and you know there, there's you know I may perhaps I'm a bit naive uh, and put out put a bit too much information in the emails that I exchange with people uh, but you know I'm what you see is what you get. I'm, I uh, I am an honest guy, and uh, it's not in my it's not in my nature uh, to um, treat people badly uh, just for the sake of treating them badly, and to try to coerce them just because I think I can. Uh, unlike uh, old Gordy Bob here. Now, I, again, I don't know if this was uh, old Gordy himself, um, but uh, it was somebody in the, in the little cabal of uh, misfit dummies that uh, uh, all congregate over there. There's about a dozen of the, of the, of the core uh, dummies that uh, all uh, go back and forth with each other. So anyway, um, as far as William working on your house, be patient. He is in high demand at the moment. He's already he already has uh, work lined up with uh, someone else here to to do work for them. Uh, so he's not uh, and myself as well. I mean, Top Tie is in fairly high demand. Um, as far as William working on your house, be patient. He is in high demand at the moment. And perhaps from him working with and for me, as well as other foreigners, he might be a little bit concerned with being up to the task of a complete house build. Uh, yes, he has built his own house, uh, but it is in his mind far from, this, uh, far from the standards most likely wanted by a foreigner, and I agree. Perhaps a combination of not wanting to let you down and not wanting to be yelled at for subpar work. Uh, he is a skilled carpenter, but not a contractor. And I think, you know, uh, 
you know, that's an important point. Uh, Tatai is a carpenter in, in the way that a shade tree mechanic is a mechanic. Um, while he has had a bit of schooling um, to be a carpenter, it's more of a, it, more from a, a trade school point of view. He's he's not a, he's not an architect. He's not an engineer. Um, he's not uh, uh, licensed. Let let let's put it that way. Um, he knows what he knows, just mainly from doing. And uh, a complete house build up to a foreigner standards. Uh, you know, he's worked for other foreigners here and there was some problems uh, because Tatai did it the best that he knows how, the Filipino way, and that wasn't exactly what uh, these foreigners were looking for. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say is that he can build you a safe and comfortable house to a high Filipino standard, but to which a typical, typical foreigner might say, in quotes, uh, you don't really expect me to move into this, do you? Uh, end quote. Um, it's just, you know, people from America, from the West, are used to contractor-built homes, professional builders building homes, uh, whereas in the provinces in the Philippines, not so much. So it's just a difference in fit and finish that... Uh, most foreigners would find lacking. Let's put it that way. Uh, up to you if you want to move forward, and that's just my thoughts. I don't want to blow you off the idea. As far as you helping out with the farm, here are my thoughts. Do I think I can make it profitable with the ideas I have to move forward? Question mark. Yes. Do I think I have the skill needed? Question mark. Yes. Uh, do I have the roughly 6,000 USD I need to set it all up? Question mark. No. And I kind of came up with that number on the fly because I was, I was just replying to this email. Um, you know, to, to finish the fields uh, wouldn't be that much. But to expand the solar uh, is going to be costly and to start to fish uh, the tilapia in the pond in an intensive grow growing manner um, is going to require uh, quite a bit of stuff more aeration um, a feed budget to uh, get them to harvest um, the nets themselves just labor to make them make the pond higher and uh, the banks of the pond higher so that it's deeper, um, you know, uh, costly. Um, so that's where I came up with that number. Um, unlike what the trolls have to say, I do consider myself an honorable and honest man. And I do. Uh, perhaps a bit prideful as well. And yeah, uh, I, I am a bit prideful. And, uh, um, you know, well, let's just continue. For me, that is way too much to accept as a gift. And the, 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 the idea that I got was that uh, he, was he was proposing basically a gift uh, to help me along uh, to save the farm. Because I think it's fairly well known what, I, what needs to happen on this farm to make it profitable. And that's going to take labor, which costs money. And it's going to take money for materials, which costs money. So I think everyone is pretty well aware of uh, what needs to happen and uh, what is needed to make that happen. Uh, for me, that is way too much to accept as a gift. And, I, and I'm referring to the $6,000. Uh, for me, that is way too much to accept as a gift, period. So flat out telling him, uh, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna accept a gift of your money. Uh, fifty fifty dollar a $50 super chat for a nice dinner out is one thing uh, that amount is entirely another and you know I, I accept 
uh, super chats and the occasional uh, 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 donation, let's say, uh, for lack of a better word, because I, I consider it a, a remuneration for a service offered. If you enjoy my content on this channel and you enjoy what I do and you think you're you're either entertained or, or, or educated and you feel like uh, compensating me for that over and above what I make for AdSense, well, thank you. It's appreciated. Uh, and I can understand that. Something like this, just somebody offering me a, a big pile of money, well, we don't, we don't take charity here. Uh, not for that uh, amount. Um, uh, alone, perhaps, question mark. No to that as well. Uh, because if I had such a loan, my obligation would, of course, be to repay it. Uh, what guaranteed income do I have to repay such a loan? Question mark. Seven hundred dollars a month from a YouTube channel, and that's about what we're making now. Seven hundred a month. Uh, I simply cannot risk it. Uh, we need that money to live on. If you have experience as a farmer or a stockman, uh, you know how risky it all is. So, uh, no, I, I don't want a gift, and no, I don't want a loan. Uh, because uh, I would be, it would be a roll of the dice whether or not I would be able to repay it. If I were to accept, uh, just for uh, argument's sake, a loan for six thousand uh, dollars, it would be my obligation to repay it uh, from uh, my YouTube salary because that's the that's the guaranteed income, right? And uh, while we do have other sources of income. Uh, it's not that, you know, that Maricel generates. Uh, it's not her responsibility to uh, re repay a loan. It would be mine. And uh, my focus is uh, being able to pay salaries and uh, our electricity bill and our food and, you know, gas, insurance, all that. So uh, that money, uh, uh, there's no extra, let's put it that way. In fact, far from it. We struggle every week to make payroll. And uh, there's no way that I could uh, uh, repay a loan. Um, if, you, if you have experience as a farmer or a stockman, and this guy had, uh, had uh, put himself out to be a uh, rancher, I guess, like, uh, raising cattle, um, you know how risky it all is. It takes a bit of luck. I give myself 7 out of 10 in the skill needed, quote unquote, department. Given the turmoil in, per in pork prices caused by ASF and the lockdowns and sales restrictions caused by COVID-19 and the almost total loss of the farm from Typhoon Odette, I give myself a 0 out of 10 in the luck department for the last four years. And yeah, people uh, can say that, yeah, I like to make excuses uh, for uh, my seeming lack of success here, but there have been extenuating circumstances far beyond my control. Um, were there things that I could have done a bit differently? Sure, There's all, there always is. Hindsight's 2020. Um, but in, say in 2017, uh, could anyone foresee ASF knocking down pork prices? Did, could anyone foresee uh, a virus getting out of a lab in China and shutting the world down, the Philippines included? I don't think anybody, uh, I don't think anybody's crystal ball was uh, uh, quite that forthcoming. Uh, Typhoon Odette, once, well, this was the first time it ever happened, so I guess you could say uh, once in a 10,000 year event to where a category 5 typhoon came right over the hole uh, yeah uh, so haven't been real lucky in how things have gone here um, and the bottom line is reasonable skill plus no luck equals zero and uh, so from my perspective, all I can see going forward is, con is to continue doing things slowly, 
and half-assed because that's the way I have to do it um, because uh, I am for the most part using entirely my money to make it happen uh, do things slowly and half-assed work as hard as I am able and hope for the best and that's basically where we're at right now um, I'm just kind of scroll down a little bit here I do want to keep this farm and make it profitable both for my for myself and Marcel and all those we employ but also as a legacy for Charlie were he to choose to be a farmer but as I see it I really have no choice but to continue doing the best I can with what I've got truly I don't want to offend you Brian a man such as yourself who would offer his help to a stranger never met is a rare thing in this day and age. I am grateful you took the time to reach out, but I see no way to move forward. Maybe you have something in mind I have not thought of. If so, let me know. So uh, basically an open offer uh, of assistance, which I turned down uh, verbatim. So I don't know what his, uh, his part two, uh, where his big gotcha, gotcha Brian part two is going to contain uh, or entail but that, that pretty much lines it out right there um, so I'm going to go to uh, the next email that he sent me um, which was uh, also January 30th uh, hi Brian thanks for the reply thanks for the reply I do respect your stance on accepting help what you're doing on the farm is great and I like to watch the progress. In my life I have been blessed and like to bless others. It wasn't a loan, it was a suggestion, uh, but it's a blessing. Anyone who works as hard as you do deserves a break, uh, but I will expect, I will respect your wishes. Um, thanks, uh, Brian. And my reply, uh, January 31st, was hi Brian. I cannot often all, off, I cannot often follow suggestions uh, because they always seem to cost more than I can afford. Uh, but I'm listening. So again, he didn't really spell out what he had on uh, had on his mind. I just told him in the previous email what I couldn't do. Um, so uh, we'll go to the next one. Um, Oh, and this was uh, um, the title of uh, the emails, uh, the email from Colorado Farmer that I just led, read. The header was uh, Brian Gift, Not Loan. Uh, so, again, he's basically offering to give me money, which I won't accept. And then his, uh, he replied again, uh, February 1st. Uh, okay, Brian, I respect your decision, but the offer still stands. Maybe a smaller amount, so you're more comfortable with it. I'm really trying to help you. Maybe you can think of an option that will work for you. Maybe a small loan attached, interest-free, and a lot of time to repay. Thanks, Brian. And uh, I never replied to him beyond that point. So, um, you know, I, I pretty much lined it out in my, in the email where I responded to him. Uh, I, I don't, uh, you know, I don't really have anything else to say. And that's why I didn't reply. Um, it was uh, as, as, as uh, courteous and respectful a thanks but no thanks uh, reply that I could I could uh, put out and I didn't think you know uh, more emails were necessary because there were there were no other you know uh, I'm I wouldn't accept three thousand uh, I wouldn't accept six thousand dollars I wouldn't accept three thousand um, uh, dollars I won't accept uh, charity um, you know the, the the whole tank thing with uh, the Hungarian polar bear you know, uh, he is providing the, he was providing and probably will provide uh, the money for those round tanks. But that wasn't just a, a, uh, a free, here you are, 
uh, go build these tanks kind of thing. Uh, that was uh, in the anticipation of getting those tanks and getting some real-time factual information from a, a research standpoint uh, of how tanks would work because uh, Mike plans to do the same thing when he comes here. Um, so uh, it wasn't just a, uh, a, a an outright gift. It was uh, uh, with the uh, caveat, with the uh, understanding that uh, it was that he wanted to be privy to the information that I gained. <coughs> <coughs> basically the research that I was going to do and he was uh, comfortable with providing uh, the means to gather that information so uh, that's pretty much what it uh, that's uh, my side of the deal so I don't know what old uh, old Gordy plans to do uh, with his big gotcha video um, you know he likes to uh, take things out of context and basically just make things up to to create his narrative um, could he just make stuff up I don't know maybe um, but uh, that, that was the entirety of our correspondence uh, and I, I basically just told him uh, thanks but no thanks uh, don't know how else to put it so um, that's going to end up this video um, I'll see you guys on Sunday. Uh, the five, ten, twenty, fifty dollar super chats are most welcome. Um, but uh, as a as a heads up to uh, people in the future who want to uh, send me uh, large sums of money just out of the blue, um, I'll tell you just like I told this guy. Um, thanks, but no thanks. Uh, we're not in the we're not in the uh, lane of, uh, uh, unlike the dimwit, who will openly beg for uh, plane ticket money, and unlike Willie Wanker, who likes to get drunk and crash his van and then uh, beg people uh, to send him money to fix it, I'm not like that. Um, uh, the dimwit and, and the little devout dimwit uh, are entirely different. Uh, they'll just bold faced ask you straight up uh, I'm a loser and help me um, I like to row my own boat so uh, sink or swim and uh, this farm is going to be a success or it's not uh, but it's going to be my doing uh, and not someone else's so I'm going to end this one up um, good old good old Gordy Bob he never likes uh, it seems like he never, he's like the Christmas gift that just keeps on giving. He never gets tired of making a fool out of himself. Uh, and this isn't the first time that I've, I've made out of, a fool out of this idiot. He just makes it too easy. Um, so. Thank you, everyone. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe.